Hello, welcome to Nursing with Professor B. My name is Bridget. I have a master's degree in nursing education, and I'm also a family nurse practitioner. In today's video, I will be discussing the top interview questions that you may get when you go for a nursing interview. So make sure that you stay tuned until the end. But first, make sure you hit the like button, make sure that you subscribe, and make sure you turn on that notification bell. Let's go. The first thing to remember when you go for a job interview is to not make it about you, right? To make it about them. So the number, the first question that you may get is, why do you want to work here? So one way that you can bedazzle them is look up the mission statement and the, whatever they have, the vision or the mission statement of the company. So um, I will give you an example. In Florida, Advent Health is, one of the larger hospitals in the region and they have multiple campus locations and the mission statement of Advent Health is to extend the healing ministry of Christ. So when you go and they say, why do you want to work here? You can show them that you did some research on the company and you weren't, I mean, yes, maybe you were applying just anywhere and so what you don't want to say is like, well, I want to work here because I need a paycheck, right? <laughs> so there's always things that you want to say, but there's, but mm -mm, don't go there. So why do you want to work here? Well, if the mission statement of a company is to extend the healing ministry of Christ, I would say, I want to work for a company that is in alignment with my core beliefs and values. So uh, your, your mission statement is to extend the healing ministry of Christ and that is in alignment with my beliefs and my purpose in life. You could go on to say, I think it's beautiful how uh, at Advent Health we are encouraged to pray or we pray before we begin the day. You know, something like that. Be honest though, if you're an atheist, then don't, don't go there, right? If you're an atheist. But if that is true, then you are answering the question in a truthful manner. Why do you want to work here or why do you want to work for the organization? Don't say the money. Don't just say, oh, I just need a paycheck. We know, like everybody knows you're here for the money, but they don't want you to say it. So employers, they're not stupid. They know that a paycheck is a huge part of why you're applying, but they want you to talk about your career, your goals, your vision for the future. So another answer might be something along the lines of, I'm fascinated by the new and emerging technology in ongoing patient care, especially in the field of pediatrics. Your hospital has been ranked in the top five hospitals in the nation for the past seven years running in new innovations. And I'm excited about the possibility of being a part of that and learning from the experts, right? Um, if your hospital is a magnet hospital saying that I'm excited to work for a magnet hospital where excellence is a priority, beef it up. Okay. The second question that you may get is how do you practice self care? Everyone knows nursing is a stressful job and there are positive and negative coping strategies and they want to know how do you cope? How do you stay mentally sane? How do you stay healthy? Right? Is this someone that is going to get burned out and just, and just, is this someone that once they experience stress, they're just going to crumble under that stress? The answer to not say is how do you practice self care is, well, I go home and I drink a bottle of wine, right? Um, <laughs> if you, I know so many people that actually do that. Remember moderation, okay? Um, so nursing can be physically and mentally taxing and interviewers, they want to see how you can balance work and life. So interviewers want to know how they, how you deal with compassion fatigue. You care for people day in and day out, but you have to care for yourself. Otherwise you are going to get burned out and you are going to get cynical and you're going to turn into one of those nurses. That's like, ugh. So how do you practice self care? You could say, and remember to always be authentic to yourself, right? So for me, I love working out. So one of mine could be, I practice self care by practicing yoga. It relaxes me and it helps me relieve stress. I, or I practice self care by going to church. 
I practice self-care by meditation. All of those are positive coping strategies. I practice self-care by playing with my dog. You know, don't be someone you're not. So if you never have exercised a day in your life, but you have a dog and your dog is your de-stressor, then say that, right? But keep it healthy. Don't, again, you know, I don't say I go home, <laughs> I go home and I punch my pillow at night and scream and cry myself to sleep, right? That would not be an appropriate answer. Number three, what do you find rewarding about this job? Or what do you find rewarding about nursing? So remember, this is not the place to talk about, well, the pay is so much better than my last job, or I live really close to home. They wanna see a little bit more substance. It's not actually, it's not actually about you, Buttercup. They want, it's about your employer satisfying their need. They need a good employee and they want to find a perfect candidate. So don't make it about you, make it about them. Yes, you may really need this job, but by making it seem like they need you in a sense. So you could say something along the lines of, I truly love helping people. And you could say, you know, you could share a story. So for example, uh, my, my boyfriend recently just shared a story with me that he took care of a COVID patient and that patient shared a video with them about him going home, right? So using that story, you could say something along the lines of, I love taking care of people. I love seeing them when they're at their worst and then when they're sent home and then when they reunite with their family and there's just nothing more touching than that. There's nothing more rewarding than taking care of an intubated patient when they are on the brink of death and then seeing them on their day of discharge be reunited with their family and how happy their family is that their loved one is with them and still with them. So that is a story that you could say for what do you find rewarding about this job, right? Um, you could say something along the lines of, I find it rewarding that I am there for patients when they're when they uh, they're at their lowest, when they're hurting, when they are all alone and they're scared, and being able to just sit with them a moment and take them by the hand and comfort them and tell them that you are that I am there for them you know those 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 little things um, being able to feed someone that is not able to feed themselves treating patients with patience my personal my personal experience that you know to answer a question like that is my mom got Gillian Barre which is a condition where the body attacks itself and they start to get ascending paralysis. So basically the legs go numb and they get weak and then the paralysis starts to go from the bottom up. So when my mom was paralyzed, she couldn't feed herself. She says she was still hungry. We joke around because my mom has such an appetite. So my mom was paralyzed and she was still hungry. She still felt hunger, but the nurses, and this was in Colombia, so no one would feed her. They would lay the tray at the uh, on her bedside table and then they would come 30 minutes later and be like oh you didn't want to eat and it's not that she didn't want to eat she just couldn't eat so she was paralyzed from the neck like basically from here down so she could still talk but no one took the time to feed her so i never want to be i never wanted to be that kind of nurse i always wanted to take care of my patients as if they were my own mother um, and you know, I love my mom very much, so I get a little bit emotional, but so the most rewarding thing about this job is just seeing someone that is suffering or in pain and being able to do small things to make their burden a little lighter. So those, those are the things that me personally, I find rewarding about nursing. So number four would be how would you handle a situation where a patient is not satisfied with your patient care? This is a little bit of a tricky question. It's an example of a behavioral question. So it's like, what would you do in this scenario? And at the end of the day, they want you to give a concrete example of what you would do. So if they're not satisfied with your patient care, well, first I would think about, is it something that I can accommodate or not? If for example, your patient wants to go out for a smoke, 
then I would, and this is not feasible, right? We can't allow patients to go out for a smoke. So I would say, you know, it depends. There's been situations where times wanted, patients wanted to go out and smoke cigarettes. I would explain to the patient that I understand that it must be frustrating so first acknowledge their concern and the, the the feeling behind it is acknowledge the frustration behind not being able to go out and smoke, especially because smoking and nicotine is so addictive. Then explain to them that it's the hospital's policy and procedure that we don't allow patients to go out to smoke. It's for patients' own safety. It's for the safety of others. It's for their health and well-being. And then what you could do instead is perhaps offer them, say, would you be interested in maybe a nicoderm patch or a nicotine patch? And tell them, I understand that this is not the same thing as you going out and smoking, but at least it will make your symptoms of withdrawal a little bit better, right? And then you would offer to speak to the physician to get an order for that. So that would be one example of turning a situation around where a patient is upset that you don't let them go out and smoke, doing everything within your power to help make the care a little bit better. So in that scenario, I would always clarify, seek to understand first, like wh why are they upset? Is it something that I can fix? Acknowledge their concern. But remember in this interview question, to give a concrete example, they like that. Number five, what is your greatest skill? Um, be humble. Don't start with saying like, <laughs> I have so many. Where do I start? Think about this question before you go into an interview. Many people nowadays do not listen, right? So you could always say something along the lines of, my greatest skill is the ability to listen or to take constructive feedback, right? It's so important as a leader to know that you have someone that is able to receive constructive criticism because many people get defensive and they can't take constructive criticism or feedback. And it's very frustrating because you're not criticizing them, you're not criticizing the person, you're just trying to help the behavior. So let's say you're going to, you're going to go with the listening example. You could say, I'm very proud of my ability to really listen to what a patient is telling me. They've told me that no, nothing frustrates them more than when they feel like they're not being listened to. And this is a double ding, 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 like a uh, bonus answer because HCAP surveys, the way that Medicare reimburses patients, that is actually one of the questions on the survey. How often did you feel your nurse listened to you? So they're really looking for a nurse that can listen to their patient. So yeah, so you could always say, you know, I really listen to my patients, make sure that they're feeling heard, understood, and and you can never go wrong with that. Um, if that if you're not a good listener, then obviously work on it. But also don't pick that as your greatest skill really think about brainstorm this question and have it ready in your little toolbox so you can pull it out when they ask you that answer or when they ask you that question. What is your biggest weakness? So, you know, this is not the time to say, <gasps> sorry guys, I have to keep this inter inter a little bit interesting. Um, otherwise I would fall asleep. So what is your biggest weakness? Don't say anything along the lines of I'm lazy. I want to do as little work as possible. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Nope. So you can say something along the lines of if you're a type A personality, that means that you like things very organized. You could say my biggest weakness is I focus too much on the details. And normally in nursing, being detail oriented is actually a good thing. So it's actually like a bad thing, but it still has a, its positives. And then you can turn it around by saying I've been striving to improve in this area by also focusing on the big picture and that way I can ensure quality patient care without getting so caught up in the details that it affects my productivity. So something along those lines, but again, being detail oriented in nursing is actually a good thing because we wanna make sure that we are giving patients the right medication at the right time, etc. Another weakness that you could say is I have trouble saying no. And again, employers kind of want to hear this because if they tell you to do something and you have trouble saying no, then most likely you're going to do it. Um, so you can say something along the lines of my greatest weakness is sometimes I have trouble saying no to requests and taking on more than I can handle. So I have been striving to improve in this area by using a, by using a time management app 
so that I can see how much time I have and whether or not I can accommodate this. When I was first applying for jobs and they would ask me this question, I would say, I would say my greatest weakness right now is my lack of experience. And that, you know, I said, this is my first job. I know it's a huge learning curve, but I also feel that my uh, educational background, my schooling did help me prepare to tackle this job or to tackle this opportunity. Another example of a greatest weakness would be I sometimes have trouble asking for help. I am independent and I enjoy working quickly. And again, being independent is often uh, a good thing. So again, we want to answer these questions with like almost like a double-edged sword, but in a good way, like being independent or sometimes I have trouble asking for help. Okay, I'm independent. And then you could turn around by saying I'm, I'm working on it because I've noticed that I have been able to produce more high quality work as a result of asking for help from those around me. Another question that sometimes they ask is, are you a leader or a follower? Now, I, I think that this is actually kind of a trick question. If, if they were, they asked um, my boyfriend this and they asked a few of my nursing students this. If I was answering this question, I would say I am both, right? Because if you were applying for a job, unless you're applying for a CEO job, and even then, you can't be a leader 100% of the time and you can't be a follower 100% of the time because they're looking for someone that can take initiative, but they're also looking for someone that can take instruction. So I would say both depending on the scenario. I am a follower in regards to if management feels that a new protocol or a new way of providing patient care that is evidence-based is superior to the way that we have been doing things, then I would be a follower because I would begin to do things in the way that they would like us to do things. I am a leader because I'm also a leader though because I lead by example and I, I am a leader when I have been a nursing preceptor for new graduate nurses on the unit. So I actually did used to train graduate nurses. I would be their preceptor. So in that case, I am their leader because I am showing them the ropes of the unit. I am teaching them. And in that sense, so again, this question is a bit of a tricky question. I would not t say to someone that, oh, I'm a leader 100%. That would be a little bit of a red flag. Like, okay, well, what, what about when I need you to follow? Are you going to be able to follow? They may also ask you, why should we pick you? So have a few attributes tucked in your back pocket in regards to what you're going to say. Why should we pick you? Because my, my ethics and my vision is in alignment with your vision statement. I am a hard worker. I am accountable. I am always on time. I am a team player. Things like that, you know, throw out those values, be succinct. But throw out those values that people are looking for. People want a team player. People want someone that rarely calls in sick unless they really are sick, right? They don't want someone that's always showing up to work late. So just throw out those values. Why should we pick you? That one's fairly easy. And then the last question that they might ask you, or even maybe one of one closer to the beginning is, why are you leaving your current position? Okay, please never, ever, ever bad mouth your last job, even if it was the worst job, even if your boss was the worst. One study actually found that like when you speak bad about other people, that people actually reflect what you were saying, the negative impression upon you. So this question is a potential landmine. So focus on the positive and how you're leveraging those in a new job. So you can say something along the lines of, my last job was a perfect opportunity for me as a new graduate nurse. I, it allowed me to learn and grow comfortable. But now that I've gained more experience, I want to, I'm ready to challenge myself. I'm ready to grow and improve my skill set. So let's say you're going from like a med surge floor to like a PCU floor or an ICU floor. Well, your acuity of care is increasing. So you're going to be learning more. I'm eager to try new things and learn skill sets that come from working in a faster paced environment like this one here etc etc you don't want to just say i'm leaving my new job because you pay me a lot more even if that's the truth even if you are leaving your job because this job pays you three dollars more five dollars more um 
that's not what you want to lead with okay thank you so much for watching good luck on your next job interview and leave in the comments below what questions you have gotten on job interviews before make sure that you hit the like button make sure that you subscribe and make sure you turn on that notification bell it helps youtube's algorithm so other nurses can benefit from these videos other nursing students mm -hmm.